Hello and welcome back. In this video we will dive into the main types of casting processes. But first let us understand what do we mean by casting? Casting is a way to make metal parts in the shape you want. You do this by melting the metal and pouring it into a mold. Then, it cools down and gets hard. Starting with the first main type of casting which is sand casting. It is a method that is used for producing metal objects. This technique is widely utilized in large-scale factories. It is especially used for manufacturing a range of items, such as engine blocks, cylinder heads, and crankshafts. The process involves using a mold made from sand material comprising two parts known as the cope part and the drag bottom part. Molten metal is poured into the mold through a pouring cup, left to cool resulting in the desired object. To achieve an appearance any excess metal can be easily trimmed away afterwards. Gravity die casting, which is also called permanent mold casting, uses molds made of metal like steel or graphite, which you can use again and again to shape metal and metal mixtures. It is used for making different things like gears, gear housing, pipe fittings, wheels, and engine pistons. First you pour melted metal into the mold, and it flows down because of gravity. Sometimes, you can tilt the mold to make sure the metal spreads out evenly. Then, the metal cools down and becomes the stuff you wanted. Unlike some other ways of casting, this method fills the mold from the bottom up. It's faster than sand casting but can be more expensive because the metal molds cost more. Next is pressure die casting. There are two main types of pressure die casting. Low pressure die casting is better for making large and simple parts. High pressure die casting is more popular when you need to make a lot of precise and complicated things. They use molds that can be used again, and these molds are covered with a slippery substance. They put non-ferrous metals like zinc, tin, copper, or aluminum into the mold and push them in with high pressure. They keep the pressure high during this quick injection process to prevent the metal from getting too hard. After the process is done, they take out the casting and clean it up to get rid of any extra material. The big difference from gravity die casting is how they fill up the mold. In pressure die casting, they use high pressure to PUSH the melted metal into the mold, and it hardens fast to make the thing they want. Now talking about plaster casting, is like sand casting, but it uses a mixture called plaster of Paris for the mold. Plaster doesn't cool the metal as quickly as sand, which is good for making precise parts with thin sections. However, it's not ideal for really hot metals like ferrous materials. This method can make both small castings, around 30 grams, and big ones, up to 45 kilograms, using plaster molds. Centrifugal casting, also known as rotocasting, is a way to make cylindrical parts in industry using spinning forces. Here's how it works, they heat up a spinning mold, then pour melted metal into it. The spinning makes the metal spread out evenly under high pressure. There are three types of centrifugal casting. True centrifugal casting lets the metal stick to the sides as it spins. Semi-centrifugal casting fills the mold using a sprue. Vertical centrifugal casting works like true centrifugal but is done in an up and down way. Lost foam casting is a bit like investment casting, but it uses foam instead of wax to make the pattern. They cover the foam with a special ceramic material by dipping, coating, spraying, or brushing. After that, they pour melted metal into the mold to make what they want. This method works for different materials like alloy steel, carbon steel, alloy cast iron, and more. The next one in the list is vacuum casting. As the name suggests, is a casting method where they make things under low vacuum pressure, less than 100 bar, to get rid of gas from the mold. Here's how it works. They pour melted metal into a mold inside a vacuum chamber to prevent bubbles and air from getting trapped. This avoids the final product from having unwanted gaps. This method is used in different industries like cars, aerospace, electronics, marine, and telecommunications. It's used to make things like chassis parts and car body pieces. Liquid forging or squeeze casting is a unique way of shaping metal. It combines permanent mold casting and die forging into one step. Here's how it works. They inject a certain amount of melted metal alloy into a mold and use pressure to shape it. After that, they heat the metal part past its melting point and take it out of the mold. This method is handy for making important parts like aluminum steering knuckles, chassis frames, and nodes. Continuous casting, as the name suggests, 
is a method to consistently make metal shapes with the same cross-section. It's commonly used for producing steel bars and other shapes like billets, ingots, and bars. They pour melted metal into a mold that's open on one side and cooled with water. This forms a solid surface on the outside while the metal inside is still liquid. The metal then solidifies from the outside in. Once it's done, they can pull out continuous strands of metal. They can cut these into specific lengths using mechanical shears or oxyacetylene torches that move along with the metal. Shell molding is a casting process where they make molds from sand that's mixed with resin to create a hardened shell around the pattern. It's a bit like sand casting, but the mold is made differently. This method is used to make gearbox housing, connecting rods, small boats, and truck hoods. That was all the main types of casting processes in manufacturing that you must know about. Feel free to write me in the comments if you have any questions. See you in the next video. Goodbye.